To start the PCB design process, we are going to create a bill of materials, or BOM. The reason for this is we already know the circuit we want to create, so knowing exactly what components we are working with helps streamline the entire process. I recommend using the tools from your favorite vendor. In my case, I'll be using DigiKey. We'll start by finding these resistors R1 and R2, both 100 ohm that limit the LED current. We are using the surface mount resistors. To make sure that they are in stock, check in stock. Set both of these values to 100 ohm to limit our results. And we'll want to use a standard 0805 package. Now we'll narrow down the resistors by cost to find uh, the cheapest one, but of course we don't want to buy 5,000. So we'll just skip ahead till minimum quantity is one. And there we go, we see resistor for 10 cents. Now I want to add this to my bomb, but uh, with DigiKey you can't do that until you are logged in. So if you have an account, log in. And I strongly recommend making an account with uh, any of your favorite vendor. DigiKey is just the one I happen to be using it, but they all have relatively the exact same tools. So now I can add this, and this is a nice way of keeping everything organized in the planning process. Now I'll move on to the 1K resistors and just like before we'll look for a surface mount resistor. And again, make sure it's in stock. Limit to a 1K. And again, find the cheapest. In this case, it's right there, 10 cents. You can see the cost benefit when you're producing something that's going to be in uh, a higher production. But uh, for one-offs, development boards, prototypes, this is, uh, this is about the cost you're going to see for a surface mount resistor under a quantity of 10. So we add it to the bomb. And now we're going to move on to the transistor. And again, I just want to reiterate the reason we're starting with a bomb and uh, not the software and the PCB design is uh, it's, it's just it's going to make everything that much quicker when you have an organized place of every component now with a design like this we only have a small handful of parts go ahead and do BJT transistors we're looking for an NPN with a small amount of parts like this it's it's not as big of a deal but uh, in most cases your circuit design is going to have a lot more components and in those cases it's just impossible to keep track you can do a ledger but uh, why not take advantage of some of this built-in software? And one of the other reasons is uh, in industry, your bill of materials is actually going to be a source of accountability. So if down the road 
a customer has a faulty piece or a batch of faulty parts, you have a audit trail that takes you right back to the exact component you ordered, its manufacturer, and uh, you can even locate where your distributor got it from, so super important. Now we're going to go with a uh, SOT23, which is the standard package for a uh, MPN transistor. We're going to limit the search to find the cheapest one, and here we go. Minimum quantity of one, ten cents. In this tutorial, we're not going to be wasting time going through this circuit design. It's just a A-stable multivibrator also known as blinking LED. But the purpose of this tutorial right now is to go over PCB design, so we're only concerned with the actual packages, their footprint, their physical characteristics, and how we're going to uh, make a PCB from schematic through PCB design through manufacture. So now we're going to look for these electrolytic capacitors. And this type of search is a uh, parameterized search, super popular because when a vendor like this, you're going to have, like you see, 123,000 electrolytic capacitors. You have to have some way of narrowing it down. So. We want to be uh, as specific as we can, and you as the engineer during the design process are going to uh, come up with your power ratings, your tolerances, whether or not they need to be mil-spec, compliances, and uh, all of those different requirements are just going to narrow it down even further, but for the sake of this design, we're just going to go with simple requirements. I wanted to have a little bit of everything, so we have a surface mount parts and then uh, one through hole part, and that would be the LED. So again, we do surface mount. My my search parameters didn't really narrow down much, so I gotta kind of move along here until I find a minimum quantity of one. Uh. And here we go. Since we're only having three volts as a battery source, the voltage rating isn't that important for us right now. Now we're going to move on to the trimmers, and even though we're not going to go through the uh, design of this schematic, I have swapped out what normally would be in this position, just one resistor, with a 1K resistor and a potentiometer so that you can see as you change the RC time constant, the uh, rate of, of uh, time that each LED is on for will change and it will have a top value of 51k total for re equivalent resistance and a bottom value of 1k so that when your wiper on your variable resistor is uh, zero you still at least have 1k of resistance I also wanted to use a wiper just because uh, it's good to have uh, for something like this different types of components now one thing we're not getting into is connectors that opens a whole nother can of worms so we're gonna go ahead and pick this 50k trim pot variable resistor and again just add it to our bomb Now we will look for the switch. This switch in this diagram just gives us a way of 
turning on and off the circuit otherwise it'd just be on indefinitely so we're going to go with a tactile switch surface mount and all we need is a uh, single pull single throw Now we're going to do, this is a coin cell battery, uh, the 20 millimeter, I think it's a 2032 is the type of battery. And we're just going to find a, uh, a battery retainer. These are also the type of batteries you would see in your motherboard, something just to hold a small amount of memory. It's definitely a, a more unique part, so I want to incorporate a, a couple unique parts. Again, with a PCB design, you can have a lot more than just resistors, capacitors, inductors. You're going to see all kinds of uh, specialized pieces of components that you can stick on your PCB for for various uses. And on this one, I uh, I ensured my search parameter included EDA CAD models. I didn't do that for all of them. I just want to, uh, as we build out our CAD library, show you that there's uh, multiple ways of obtaining your footprints in your schematic symbols and in this case we'll go ahead and use the ultra librarian uh, tool which is associated with DigiKey. Uh, it also requires you to make an additional count with them and now we're going to go for our LED I want to use a through hole uh, standard five millimeter in this case only so that we can have a, uh, a through hole component in this design um, if this was something you'd actually use, uh, we probably would not be using electrolytic capacitors, be using some smaller surface mount. We can even reduce our size down to a uh, uh, 0603 resistors or even smaller. So again, the purpose of this is not to make something small and efficient, it's just to teach you PCB design. And this will be our one through hole component. And there are benefits of having through hole components over surface mount. The idea is not always to go small, smaller is not always better. Sometimes you need the mechanical aspects of the through hole component because it gives you a better rigid attachment to your board. And uh, if, you, if your PCB is facing environmental challenges, vibrations, stuff like that, through hole components may be more desirable. Plus they tend to have higher uh, power ratings. So here's a tool now that we go in our bomb, it's done, every, every component is on here. We can use this feature where we add our reference designator. This is a huge help, especially when your PCB has uh, a lot more than just these few parts. And the reason it helps is when your order comes in, you'll have all these baggies, electrostatic baggies, uh, and uh, it'll be quite a bit of effort to figure out which one goes to where. You'll have to reference your schematic. But if you go ahead at this time and just put the reference designator, each baggie will tell you uh, what that component is for. So, for example, uh, our transistors will be U1, U2, and uh, our cat capacitors will be C1, C2. Again, this is just going to help streamline the process. And when you're in industry, time is money. Being able to turn around a schematic fast, especially during your prototyping development stage, it's going to make your boss happy. The customer reference is helpful if you are ordering multiple projects for different uh, different systems, different boards, then you can organize it per project. And what's nice now is we can download a Excel file and uh, tell it what fields we want to download and it will give us a nice Excel spreadsheet uh, as another reference. And uh, again, in industry this is just as important as your schematic, as your 
PCB layout. Uh, it will be referred to, it will be reviewed. So just get into the habit of, uh, of this process now. It's, it's going to help you in the long run. So there you have it. We have our bill of materials. It's saved both online according to our login account and then we could have an Excel file like this which could be shared amongst teammates. And this isn't the final straw. If you need to make a last minute change, you can always make it 